Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mackenzie and I teach third grade in California. If you're new here, I make videos sharing all my teacher tips, so I would love for you to click that subscribe button and follow along. And if you are not new here, welcome back. I am super happy that you're joining in on today's video. So today is all about using Class Dojo in your classroom. Now, if you are new to Class Dojo, it is a classroom management tool that also makes it really easy to communicate with families and keep them in the loop all year. I do have a video on my channel where I walk you through setting up your class and a detailed overview of all the basics that you need to know to get started. So if you haven't already, be sure to check that video out. And today I'm going to be focusing on new ways you can use Class Dojo in your classroom to build community and really make the most out of all the awesome features that Class Dojo has to offer. I do want to thank Class Dojo for sponsoring today's video. I am super excited to be teaming up with them as a teacher who has really been using Class Dojo for years. So I am super happy to be sharing tips and more ideas so that you can make the most out of Class Dojo in your classroom. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, before we get started, I would really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. That's one of the best ways to support my channel. And if you know of a teacher who would find this video helpful, I would love for you to share it with them. Especially at the beginning of the year, as we are all getting to know our students, I know it is so important to start the year off building a strong, positive classroom community. And with that comes a lot of planning with social emotional lessons and get to know you activities. And so I thought we would first take a look at Mojo's activity corner, which is going to make that planning a lot easier. So I'm going to type in classdojo.com slash activity corner and we have arrived at Mojo's activity corner. So Mojo's activity corner is filled with so many ready to go resources for teachers. So it's organized by topic so you can easily find back to school activities which have some classroom setup resources in it too like an alphabet here, calendar. There's even this adorable affirmation mirror kit where you could print it out and cut out all the little pieces. There are also activities for different subjects, holidays, and my favorite is just how many of the resources are centered around specific social emotional skills. Since we're talking about class community specifically, let's go ahead and click on teamwork here. And then there's so many activities that center around that theme. So I'm going to click on this get to know me activity. Okay, that looks good. And when you want to preview and print out a resource, simply click download. Then you'll be able to print out everything you need. So as you can see, it has a clear description of what the students will need and an outline that shares ideas on how to use the resource. This would be a great activity for your students to get to know each other and build those relationships as they interview one of their classmates. They could share out what they learn about each other. I'm really excited because I plan on using this little get to know you activity with my students when they are introduced to their reading buddies this month. So I'm going to have them bring the survey with them and they'll actually interview their reading buddy and it'll be a fun way to get to know each other. Encouraging kindness I find is so important when building community as well. So let's go ahead and click on kindness. There is a kindness bingo char that could be displayed in the classroom. I always love a good kindness activity or I could see printing this out for each student so that they could try to fill out their own bingo card. There are just so many activities that would work really well specifically during morning meeting or if you have a designated social emotional learning time in your classroom so they can really practice those skills with each other. Personally I'm a big fan of class dojos mindfulness activities and so if you go over to mindfulness you can actually print out everything you need to create a calm corner for your classroom to support students in self-regulation and coping strategies with big feelings i am loving my calm corner this year it was so easy to just print and go and it's a place where students can take a break, they can reflect on how they're feeling, and they can choose a coping strategy to support them. So when first introducing the Calm Corner to my students, one of the activities I do is to create these calm dice with my students. So this is from Mojo's Activity Corner as well. So I gave all of my students their own calm dice, and they were actually able to cut it and put it all together, and they could color it. And it just gives a lot of different strategies they can use to self-regulate. So there's draw a picture, dance, build with blocks, think happy thoughts, practice yoga. And of course, in our calm corner, they have all these different yoga poses that they can do to kind of relax and calm their bodies. And then they were also able to think of their own on the empty side. And it's just a fun way to kind of reflect on what coping strategies we could use to self-regulate or when we have really big feelings to work through. In the calm corner, I also keep some coloring pages. I usually switch out some different posters that I put in there as they reflect on their feelings. I also keep little mojo over there so that they can hold him if they need some comfort during that time. So really so many resources for you to check out and find something that works for your classroom. 
Now we're going to take a look at Dojo Islands, which is a super fun virtual playground for your students and a great way to build community with them this year. So Dojo Islands is a virtual playground where your students can play, explore, and create together in a very safe and engaging space. To access Dojo Islands, simply click the Dojo Islands tab when you're in class view, and your students are able to enter from their own class Dojo accounts. Once students are in, they can also dress up their little dojo monster with a new look. There are so many different costumes and outfits for them to make it really fun. Students are also only interacting with their classmates, so that can put your mind at ease that they're playing only within your classroom community. And then once they've entered the world, they'll see their classmates in live time. So they can use this kid-friendly chat, which also keeps their communication safe and positive. So when they go up to a friend, they can click this little chat icon to invite a friend to play, or they could click one of the emojis to say hi to them. So within the world, there are lots of different areas to explore. So let's head over to the build zone. As a teacher, the build zone is one of my favorite areas because students can actually work together and complete building challenges. So from Mojo's activity corner, you can download different building challenges for your students to complete. There's a space for you to brainstorm expectations with your class to make sure that this is a positive learning experience for everyone. The challenge worksheet is what I pass out to my students where they can brainstorm their ideas and a reflection page for students to really take a moment and think about their teamwork success and their design improvements throughout the activity. I love that these building challenges are all ready to go for the students, and they're really a great way for students to practice that creative thinking and teamwork skills and problem solving as they're interacting in that space. You could also use Dojo Islands as a fun way to build community during morning meeting with some fun activities where you could have all of your students log on and then play a game of Four Corners, or they can even play Hide and Seek, which is a really fun game that is already within Dojo Islands. So on the beach, they just need to find the Hide and Seek sign, and then it's automatically going to ask their other classmates on Line if they want to join in on the fun. This is such a fun game to play as a whole class and you'll definitely hear a lot of laughter throughout it. I definitely plan on adding Dojo Islands as a fun Friday option for my students so that they can interact with each other and have fun with one another. If you are just starting out with Dojo Islands, there is a new welcome kit for teachers that includes a good overview of Dojo Islands filled with lots of different activity ideas to get you started. So be sure to check that out. Another great way to build community with your class is to use Dojo's conundrums. So the conundrums are these problems where students need to work together to solve where the solution is not always very easy to figure out. So to get to conundrums, you can access it through the big ideas tab on the bottom of your class view and then click conundrums. Then there is this whole library filled with different conundrums. When you click on one, it starts with a short video to show and explain what the problem is. And then students are given different options to choose from to solve the problem. The tricky part is there is no clear answer or right solution to this problem. The students really need to think thoughtfully and critically about each possible solution to come up with one answer. I love using these conundrums as a morning meeting activity for team building, where students get an opportunity to work with different classmates. To do this, I first use Class Dojo's Group Maker to make random groups of my students so that they are working with different classmates. Then as a whole class, we watch the video once through. That way they're introduced to the problem. Then after the video, I just check for understanding, making sure they understand what the problem is in the video. And then we watch the video through one more time. That way they can really think through now that they know what the problem and possible solutions are. Students then go into their teams and I give them each one of the worksheets that are already part of the class dojo conundrums and then students need to work together to really think through the pros, the cons, and the facts from the conundrum video to come up with the best possible solution. I do tell them that the goal is to really have unanimous agreement within their group so that they really need to practice their communication skills and their reasoning while they think through each of the problems. So for example in this weather conundrum students Students need to decide if a corporation should be able to sell an invention that makes it rain. And if they have the right to, who should they actually be allowed to sell it to? So I set a timer for about 10 minutes for students to hold their conversations with their team. And then I have them choose one speaker to present to the class. And then when the timer is up, each team gets a chance to share out their solution. I really found these conundrums are a great way for students to really practice their critical thinking skills and their respectful conversations with one another by having to agree with their classmates or respectfully disagree by sharing their reasons why they support someone's point of view or think differently. There are so many conundrums already in the library, but don't worry if you run out because there are more on the way, so definitely keep an eye out.
So like I showed you, the conundrums can be found under the big ideas tab in your class view. So let's go ahead and go back to that big ideas because there is a lot more to take a look at. The big ideas are a great way to spark conversations about different social emotional skills and values with your students. To access big ideas, you can click on the tab from your class view. This is a series of videos that share stories about the little dojo characters overcoming challenges they face as they learn about the importance of different values. So for example, when you click on the growth mindset ideas, it gives a series of five short videos that follow the character Mojo. And in each chapter, he faces different challenges and learns the power of using a growth mindset. At the end of each video, there are discussion questions that you could easily project onto the board for a class discussion. And then there are additional growth mindset activities for students to do, like setting new goals for the year, or there's a powerful snowball activity where students can learn about the importance of making mistakes. I love pairing the big ideas videos with other activities from Mojo's activity corner. So at the beginning of the year, we always start with growth mindset because I really like instilling a growth mindset in my students from the start of the year. So we take time to watch each chapter of Mojo's adventures throughout a week. And then at the end of Mojo's journey, we do a little activity to practice the difference between a fix and a growth mindset. So this activity I got off of Mojo's activity corner. So during class, I have each student take a different quote. And these quotes are going to either reflect someone with a fixed mindset or someone with a growth mindset. So each student takes a turn to read out their card and then as a class we determine if it is going to be part of a fixed mindset or if that is something that someone with a growth mindset would say. So we take time to sort the different cards and then at the end of the activity I give my students the blank chat bubbles and they write their own little growth mindset message to be displayed in the classroom. So there are plenty of other topics that are covered in big ideas like perseverance or empathy and they're really short little videos that spark really great conversations with your class. So those are some of my favorite ways to build community within your classroom, but something that I have always appreciated about Class Dojo is the focus on building community within the whole school and with our students' families. So in my last Class Dojo video, I walk you through how to use like Class Story and all the different ways to communicate with families through the messaging portion of the app. But there have been some exciting updates since then. So first, you can invite families a lot easier with these new QR code invites. So you can easily print out the QR code. And then I really like posting it in our classroom on our bulletin board where I I always put different announcements so that when families come and pick up the students, they can easily see it there. They can just scan it with their phone or a really good time is during conferences and just having that QR code out so you can actually help your students' families log in and get them connected. You also have the option to download the QR code invites that are individual to each student. And those are also really good just to pop into a homework folder and send home with your students. So once families are all connected, one really exciting update is the group chat feature. So now you can actually message groups of families and they can all respond within that group chat. So to do this, you just click messages, then click the group chat icon, you add their names, and then you can start a thread. So you can send messages to a group of parents or to a group of teachers when your whole school staff is connected too. This would be great to coordinate volunteers for an upcoming school event, like maybe a book fair where you have a lot of parents volunteering their time, or for that upcoming field trip where you wanna connect with all the chaperones and also have the chaperones a way to talk with each other to plan out all of those little details. You can also also add any co-teachers to the group messaging as well since they are also part of your class. Or from your homepage, if you click staff messaging, you can send messages to other staff members in a group that are connected on Class Dojo. So I did just mention co-teachers. And so on Class Dojo, you can actually add co-teachers to your class of students. So to do this, you'll click options, add co-teachers, and then select the teachers if they are already connected or invite them by email. Once co-teachers are added, they can also award your students points and they can also message parents in their own private messaging channel to stay connected with families. So those are some updates with communication that I really wanted to share with you because I have found that when families are connected, then our communities are even stronger. Class Dojo is such a useful tool with so many resources to really bring our students together and build a positive classroom community. I would love to know what you plan on trying out with your class this year, so be sure to comment that down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for all my newest teacher tips and I'll catch you next time. Bye friends. Mm -hmm.